Hey future doctors, welcome back to another video lesson from Rose Medical Lecture. Before we begin, I just want to tell you something. The slides based on this lecture and many medical flashcards and case discussions are available in my Instagram page. The link of my Insta page is given in the description box. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to my channel and in this video we are going to talking about the clinical manifestations of tuberculosis in the previous videos we discussed about the introductory part as well as the pathogenesis of this bacteria the link of those videos are also provided in the description box of this video come to today's topic clinical manifestations of tuberculosis tuberculosis or tb can be classified as pulmonary tb as well as extra pulmonary tb First, let's discuss about the pulmonary TB and then let's discuss about the extra pulmonary TB. Pulmonary TB accounts for 80% of all cases of TB. It can categorize into primary and post-primary or secondary TB. When a person comes to contact with those bacteria for the first time, he develops primary TB. Let's see what are the features of primary TB. Most commonly affected age group is children. Primary TB mainly involves the upper part of the lower lobe and lower part of the upper lobe of our lung. Usually, the known immune host, mainly the children, form a primary subpleural lesion known as gone focus, which is a fibronodular lesion. Gone focus, in association with the hyla lymphadenopathy, form the primary complex. The primary complex calcified to form the Ranke complex. The primary TB can be asymptomatic or may present with fever, productive cough with or without the hemoptysis and occasionally chest pain, night sweating and weight loss. Hemoptosis is nothing but coughing up of blood. In majority of cases, the lesion heals spontaneously. Very rarely in children with impaired immunity, it becomes progressive primary TB which spreads by local invasion and by lymphatics. What is, what is latent primary TB? The bacteria is not going to die but they are going to stay dormant inside the person and not going to cause any manifestations. But this can undergo reactivation and can cause the disease at any point of time in that person's life. It's about primary TB. Next, let's discuss about the post-primary or secondary pulmonary TB. Secondary pulmonary TB occurs following the reactivation of the latent TB or who already has primary pulmonary TB but the disease was in control get exposed to the further bacteria frequently and disease get worsened. Adults are commonly affected by secondary TB. The areas of lung having high oxygen tension is affected most. Commonly, the epical and posterior segment of the upper lobes of our lung. Asthma and focus or infraclavicular infiltrate are calcified nodules usually seen in upper lobe. Simon's focus is a hematogenous seedling in the apex of the lung. Lymph node involvement is unusual in secondary TB. In secondary TB, the lesions undergo necrosis, tissue destruction, which leads to cavity formation. Symptoms of secondary TB is similar to that of primary TB, but severity is more than primary TB. What is the fate of secondary TB? In majority of cases, it is infectious. Because they have lesions and excessive cough with or without expectoration and having so much of tuberculosis bacilli. It's gonna spread this tuberculous bacilli is gonna spread the infection to nearby people. Secondary TB can lead to bronchogenic spread to the same or opposite lung forms a satellite lesions which coalesce and produce the caseating pneumonia. Hematogenous spread leading to the seedling of bacilli in various body parts and granuloma formation. Secondary TB rarely heals spontaneously. It's about pulmonary TB and its subcategories. Next, let's discuss about the extra pulmonary TB. The extra pulmonary TB occurs due to the hematogenous spread to the various organs. 
APTB or extra pulmonary TB constitutes only 15 to 20 percentage of total TB cases. But in HIV patients, the chances of extra pulmonary TB is very high. It's about 20 to 50 percentage of all cases of TB. Since the, extra Since the extra pulmonary TB is due to the hematogenous spread, it can affect the other organs. So it can be tuberculosis, lymphadenitis, pleural tuberculosis, tuberculosis of the upper AOVs, genitourinary TB, skeletal TB, TB of CNS, gastrointestinal TB, tuberculous pericarditis, tuberculous skin lesions, miliary or disseminated TB. Let's discuss one by one. First one, tuberculous lymphadenitis. It is the most common EPTB or extra pulmonary TB, accounting for 35% of all EPTB cases. The most common sites are posterior cervical and supraclavicular lymph nodes. It is painless swelling in the neck region without warmth or color change. Second one is pleural tuberculosis. It accounts for 20% of all EPTB and present as pleural effusion. Third one, third one is TB of upper airways which affect the larynx, pharynx and epiglottis. Fourth one is genitourinary TB which involving the renal TB and genital TB. In case of genital TB, uh, in, in case of females, the fallopian tube and endometrium are commonly involved causing infertility. In males, epididymis is the most common site get affected by the genital TB. In case, in case of skeletal TB, the weight-bearing joints such as hip, knee and spine are affected. Ports disease or tuberculous spondylitis is most common skeletal TB that affect the spine. In case of severe or advanced disease, collapse of vertebral bodies result in the kyphosis or gyphus and a paravertebral called abscess may also form. In case of TB of CNS, the tuberculous meningitis and tubercloma are the common forms. It occur commonly in children. In case of gastrointestinal TB, the most common site involved is terminal ileum and cecum. The root of spread may be due to swallowing of the sputum with direct seeding or it can be due to hematogenous spread or ingestion of cow's milk contaminated with Mycobacterium bovis. The tuberculous pericarditis occurs as direct extension from the adjacent lymph node or following the hematogenous spread. It occurs in elderly people in countries with low TB prevalence. In case of tuberculosis, in case of tuberculous skin lesions, it can be scrofuloderma or lupus vulgaris. Scrofuloderma is a skin condition that occurs due to direct extension from the underlying tuberculous lymphadenitis. Lupus vulgaris is a apple jelly nodules formed over the face and female. Miliary or disseminated TB appear like yellowish 1 to 2 mm size granulomatous lesions resembling the millet seed in various organs and it mainly occurs through hematogenous spread. It is more common in HIV infected people. You can see in this diagram over here you can see the miliary seed pattern over the chest x-ray and I already told you that the frequency of extra pulmonary TB is more in HIV patients and it is about 20 to 50 percentage. Extra pulmonary TB patients are more than pulmonary TB patients among HIV patients. When we come to epidemiology, about one by third of the world population is affected asymptomatically with this bacteria, but only 5 to 10 percentage develop clinical disease during their lifetime. India is the country with highest TB burden according for 1 by 4th of the global TB cases. It's about today's video. If you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Follow me on my Instagram page. The link is given in the description box. And if you have any doubts, just comment in the comment box. Feel free to ask. Just comment in the comment box. And thank you for watching. Take care.